flying weight. The weight your hawk needs to be in order to fly. Wrong! In this video, I'm going to talk about weight management of birds of prey. So what is weight management? Well, it might sound pretty obvious, managing the weight of a bird of prey. But before we get into what's actually involved, we need to take a look at why we need to manage our hawk's weights. Are birds of prey domesticated? According to National Geographic, an animal is classed as domesticated when it is genetically different from its wild counterpart. Domestic animals have been selectively bred by humans in order to acquire the most desirable traits of an individual, and that can then be passed on through further generations. While this has been done in falconry, captive birds of prey are still genetically close to their wild birds of prey counterparts, so they are not classed as domestic. You might be wondering why I'm talking about domestication in a weight management video. It's all to do with the psychology of the hawks. There are three main reasons an animal is domesticated. Companion animals, such as dogs, have been selectively bred to live alongside humans. They are less aggressive and easily socialised to behave in ways that benefit us. Livestock have been selectively bred to produce a higher yield. Working animals are similar to companion animals and have a temperament more suited to training and working with humans. Birds of prey have not been selectively bred in any of these ways. The hawk's wildlike nature lends itself to the traditional purpose of falconry, hunting. Therefore, the training and management of a bird of prey differs vastly to most domestic animals, and weight management is vital. We can basically look at them as wild animals. While birds of prey can be intelligent animals, unfortunately, we can't just tell them that we are going to cause them no harm and just ask them to work with us nicely. It's just not natural for them to be a companion to us humans. It's our job as falconers to convince our hawks that it is beneficial for them to be working with us. While they make it look easy, flying is hard work and surviving as a wild animal comes with many difficulties. Dealing with changes of temperature and weathers, keeping safe from potential other predators, producing offspring and making sure that you can find your next meal. Therefore, birds of prey have to constantly balance energy output with input. All of the difficulties with surviving as a wild animal requires energy. Metabolising nutrients to keep warm, alert and healthy, dedicating nutrients to producing offspring, working muscles for flight. Without food, none of this would be possible. As a wild animal, your next meal is never guaranteed. There is no way to know how much energy it is going to take to acquire the next meal. For this reason, birds of prey can appear to be very lazy. A study published in the Journal of Raptor Research in 2015 stated that wild golden eagles spend up to 85% of their day perched, and that's in order to conserve energy. And that finally brings us back to falconry. If our hawks have got plenty of nutrition or weight, they are going to want to conserve that for as long as possible. They do not want to go out and waste it just randomly flying around. If our hawks haven't got enough nutrition to maintain health condition or are low in weight, they are not going to be able to perform like the athletes we want them to be. And that is why we have to manage our hawks' weights. As biological animals, it is difficult to categorise the condition and weight of a bird of prey, but there are rough categories which we call a body score. Checking your hawk's body score will come later, but for now, a hawk's condition can be a score of 1 to 5. Body score 1 is severely underweight. There is no fat or muscle around the keel and the keel feels sharp. Score 2 is underweight. There may be a small amount of muscle on the keel but no fat and the keel is still prominent. Score 3 is the ideal weight. There is a good level of muscle around the keel, but the bird is still lean without unnecessary fat reserves built up. Skull 4 has a good level of muscle, but also a small layer of fat surrounding the muscle and keel. Skull 5 is severely overweight, with a large layer of fat surrounding the chest. 
It's important to know that muscle and fat are very different. Muscle is used for motion, allowing the hawk to beat her wings and fly, whereas fat provides insulation and protection and is a source of stored energy. A hawk can't get all of the nutrients she requires from maintaining health from fat. However, it does provide her with energy to keep her warm and power those muscles between feeding. When a hawk is taken from the aviary for the first ever time when she is hard penned or reclaimed after a molt, she will be very high in weight. This is because breeding birds or molting birds are typically given an abundance of food, allowing the hawks to reach the highest weight that they can be. They will typically have a body condition score of four or five, meaning she has a layer of fat surrounding her pectoral muscles. With her wild mentality, she does not yet understand that us as falconers are not a threat to her. And so no amount of food that we offer is going to be worth taking the risk of letting her guard down and being comfortable around us while she has a nice layer of fat to survive on. This is why we begin to reduce the hawk's weight as the first step of training. And in falconry, this is referred to as to inseam. Once she has used up her fat reserves, one of two things may occur. Either she will become desperate and take the risk to eat in the presence of the falconer, or by that point she will have manned and be comfortable enough to start taking the food. Once a bird of prey has eaten in a situation, she will start to become more comfortable as she realises she was able to input energy for survival and didn't get attacked or killed. It may not have been ideal for her, but she's still alive and now full of food. Over time, she will become more manned to the falconer and start being comfortable in our presence. Once she's manned and comfortable feeding, it does not mean by any way that she is trained and ready to start flying. We still have to think of her as having a completely wild mindset. She has no idea when her next meal will come. And so if she feels like she has enough nutrition, she will want to preserve it by perching rather than flying around. She will have no motivation to work with us. Weight management is all about ensuring that she has enough nutrition to be fit and physically healthy, but enough motivation to still work with us. There is a few methods to determine the condition of our hawks to make sure that they are not underweight or overweight. The most obvious one that I have shown in so many of my previous videos is to record the actual weight of the bird. Weighing a hawk every now and then will give you very little information. For it to be any use, this must be done on a daily basis. Tracking and recording the physical weight of a hawk is also pretty useless information without the other methods for checking the condition. As discussed before, we check the body score of our hawks just like the physical weight. Checking this condition randomly every now and then will tell you very little. This is because every single hawk is individual and will feel naturally different. The only way for this to be useful information is to check regularly and know what your specific hawk feels like. This is simple to check. Using your fingers and thumb, slip them under the feathers on her chest and run them up and down either side of the keel in the center of the chest. Another way that we can determine the condition of our hawks is by observing and understanding her behaviors. Once she is trained and manned, if she is baiting around and getting stressed and just generally appears to have reverted her training, it is likely that she is overweight. If she's aggressive or lashing out with her feet in desperation, it's likely she's underweight. I like your jumper, Jake. I like yours as well. Thank you very much. And now you can have one too. That's right, we've opened up our very own merch shop. Uh, it will be down below this video. So if you would like your very own Mercer Falconry jumper, and they're also customizable so you can add your own name to the top, then go and take a, a look at our shop below. It's a great way to support the channel. We're not gonna become millionaires off selling jumpers, but you might be able to help us out a little bit. Bye now, while stocks last. New from JML. <laughs> Quick disclaimer, it's not actually from JML. When I start training with a bird, I begin by reducing her weight, along with manning, until she has enough motivation to feed. I keep a close eye on her condition throughout this process in the three ways we've just discussed. And once she has the motivation to feed and work with me, I reward her well, and her weight will begin to increase again. 
I continue with this until once again she loses motivation. She can then be taken back to the weight where she was motivated to work just before she lost her motivation. This process allows me to find the highest condition I can keep her in while in training. This sweet spot weight is what most falconers refer to as the flying weight. And the mistake so many make is that once they have found this weight, they set it in stone, never to be changed or moved from. I disagree with this mentality. In my opinion, a flying weight is just whatever weight she's flying at best at at that time. And so my hawk's flying weights change often. She doesn't know or care what her exact weight is. At times, she may think she doesn't need food at this exact many grams. Other times, she may think she needs food at a weight higher than you have ever flown her before. A flying weight is a fluid thing that changes constantly. And therefore, I say my birds have a flying range. A range of weights that I know that they will be comfortable flying in. Sometimes it's the low end of the range, sometimes it's the high end of the range. And even still, this range often changes. So how do you know how much food to feed her to maintain this suitable flying range? Now this is where things can start to get complicated and difficult for somebody first starting in falconry. If we draw a timeline of her condition and motivation, it may be easier to visualise. Let's say you fly her every day at 9am. We can start by adding a point for when you have weighed her at 9am. As she flies and she is rewarded, her condition will drop. It might sound strange saying that her condition is dropping even though she is feeding each time she is rewarded. And that is because birds of prey have a crop, an elastic sac in the throat that holds all of the food before digestion. While she's flying, she is filling her crop, not absorbing the nutrients. Once she is flown and begins to turn over her crop, her condition will rise and peak. From this point, until her next feed, her condition will decrease. Not as fast as when she was flying, but at a steady rate while she is perching. And that then takes us back to 9 o'clock the next day when you weigh her again. Unfortunately for us, this is not a set formula. And many different factors affect the change in condition. Let's start by talking about casting. Birds of prey eat the entire carcass but they can't digest the entire carcass. This is why a hawk will regurgitate a cast about 12 hours after she has eaten. Most likely, the cast will be made of like feathers and fur, as hawks can digest all of the soft tissues and the bones. Some people wear their hawks after she has flown as well as before, and some even wear the food that they feed to her. I find this to be deceiving information and not necessary. But to explain why, let's go back to our timeline and add separate points for her physical weight. At 9am when she is first weighed, we will put both condition and weight points in the same place. As she is flown and rewarded, while her condition is going down, her weight with the food in the crop is going up. Once she has digested the food and her condition has peaked, her weight is still higher. This then gradually declines and both her condition and weight only meet again once she has regurgitated a cast. Now it might sound like it would just make things simpler to remove casting material from her diet. That way you would be able to track her start weight, how much food has gone in and her end weight. But casting is an important part of her diet. It protects her from any sharp bones and it helps to clear out her system, preventing any buildup of pathogens. Another factor that will affect her condition is the actual flight she does. Some days she will fly for longer than others. Some days she will fly faster, beating her wings more than others. No two flights require the exact same amount of energy. The more work she puts into flying, the lower her condition will be falling during the flight, meaning her condition will peak lower than other days. Perhaps she has a lazy day using a thermal just to sort around, or she just hops from branch to branch in a tree. On these days, her condition won't fall a lot, meaning her peak condition will be much higher than other days. The temperature is also a factor that plays into this, and this is something that will become quite obvious once you spend a full year weighing and flying your hawk. During the summer, when the temperature is nice and warm, she does not require a high amount of energy to keep herself warm, and so her condition will drop at a slower rate. 
During the winter, when the temperature is cold, she requires a higher level of energy to stay warm, and so her condition will drop faster. This means that if she was fed a constant amount of food, her physical weight could be different every single day. All of these things must be taken into consideration when deciding how much food she requires. And once again, there is no set formula or answer to questions like, Dan, how much should my female Harris hawk be eating in the winter? Every individual bird digests food at a different rate, metabolizes at a different rate, and gain and lose condition at different rates. Every bird is individual. The only way to know the answer is to just keep track and know your hawk. At this point, I've mentioned maintaining condition throughout the video. But the end goal after finding a workable weight in early training is not just to maintain this weight, we want it to increase. Muscle is a really heavy fibre in biology terms, heavier than fat. If we're exercising our hawks every single day, but keeping her flying range the same all the time, she will never be able to increase her fitness. In order for her muscles to grow and gain more fitness, her weight must increase. Sky, for example, my Jerlana Falcon, last year, at the start of the show season, she was flying around 915 grams. Our final show in September that year, she was flying at about 990 grams. That's an increase of 75 grams just through the season. 8% increase between April and September. And that's the equivalent of me putting on five kilograms of muscle. And it's not just Sky. When I started training Igor, my Kestrel, he was flying around 160 grams. He now flies around 190 grams. An increase in body weight of 18.75% and that is the equivalent of me putting on 11.25 kilograms worth of muscle. Weight management is an excellent tool for monitoring the health of a hawk. Birds of prey are excellent at hiding health issues from everyone. Again, as we have to think of them as having a wild mindset, an animal in the wild that is sick or injured is easy pickings for other predators. If you are showing some kind of issue, you will become prime target for other hungry animals. The best chance of surviving depends on how well an injured or sick animal can hide it. This can make it very difficult for us as falconers to know when there is an issue. But by managing the weight and understanding how our individual hawk's weight changes, we are able to notice when something is wrong. Many conditions will cause a hawk to lose appetite. If she is losing weight but has no appetite and won't eat, it is time to get her to the vet. This means that we can recognise conditions nice and early and hopefully whilst it is still treatable. So the next time someone asks you what weight should a Harris Hawk fly at, you can tell them there is no set answer. What might be a healthy weight for your Harris Hawk could be a dangerously low condition for mine. If you have any questions about weight management, please leave it as a comment. I try to reply to as many comments as I can, and even if I don't answer, there are many people subscribed who are knowledgeable enough to help you out. Make sure you give the video a like, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.